Hi, this is John with the Evolving World. Today I'm doing a video on tearing down a Fiat 500e. This is a very interesting project. I've been looking forward to this for many months now and can't wait to get started. This is going to be a complete tear down of the car, focusing on all the electronic components that make it an EV. There's about four reasons why I want to do this. First is just to see how everything works. The second reason is I want to be able to modify the powertrain a little bit, get in there and mess around with the computer, see if we can tinker around, change a few things. I'd rather do that on this car than my other car. Third thing is battery teardown. Sooner or later, you're going to have to replace the battery on this car, so you're going to have to know how to rebuild it and put it back together again. And there are newer cells available now that are, have higher capacity that fit in the same space. And the fourth reason is I really love the Bosch powertrain that comes with this car and I've always wanted to do an EV conversion. So I got to thinking, well, hmm, we have a nice powertrain and I want to do an EV conversion. So wouldn't it be interesting to take this powertrain out of this car and put it into something else that's equally interesting, but maybe a thousand pounds lighter. So I'm going to do a little close up here of the, of the car here now that it's in the shop and ready to go. So it looks like... Um, you know, obviously there's damage, clearly, you know, damage beyond repair here. But not quite sure what ended up happening. We have scrape marks up here. I mean, it looks like it somehow got on it. This must have hit something up here. Crashed the windows and everything. Um, this side's the most, the most severe. So it looks like it might have rolled or found itself on the side somehow here. Because we got scratch marks pretty bad right here. I was not sure what happened, but um, obviously it's beyond repair, so it makes for a perfect uh, makes for a perfect uh, salvage car here because it's a low mileage car and it's fully functional if you can believe that. Except for one thing, right here. This is, must be the origin of the cr of the accident here. This this uh, front control arm or something behind here is is, is messed up because this wheel kind of moves in an elliptical pattern and kind of gets caught up on stuff when you're moving. So. Other than that impairment, the thing seems to be fully functional. There's actually no, no um, uh, warning lights. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's just another day at the office. Car's running fine. Don't worry about it. And despite all this clear, you know, damage up here that the car kind of rolled and everything, believe it or not, not only do the doors still function, but uh, the airbags didn't go off at all, if you can believe that. So, um, airbags are still in place and still intact. I guess the way that it got hit, or, or maybe it got hit when it was off or something. Maybe it was turned off or something. And so I'll show you the doors. <coughs> this one's messed up here, but the, you can still open it. I mean, this car has good structure. I mean, it's, it's definitely a sound, sound design car. It's pretty impressive. It's like the old Saab 900 commercials from this... 80s or whatever when they show the cars rolling like five times and then they drive off and everything well Kind of like this car you can roll it and it still will drive off It's fine I'm Exactly sure that it's like there's kind of it's kind of a puzzle just to look at it and kind of figure out you know what the hell happened, but it's uh Yeah, it's very interesting uh, Predicament here. So yeah, so now I got a car that's got 18 what we got here we got 18,668 miles on it this is the 2015 model so it's basically other than how it looks it's it's probably in mint condition we're going to go ahead and um scan the car and make sure see what the battery looks like and everything try to get this in a position that i can show you guys what's going on here and still be able to read it myself Everything looks pretty good. I did a quick scan right before I filmed here just to look at it here And I couldn't find anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with the battery pack. It seems to be pretty solid There's nothing no no error messages or anything I mean obviously the battery is one of the most important features here of the car And so yeah, check it out Battery state of health 100% R 99.6 C 91.37 and then of course I think what's really important is the uh, amp hour capacity I think that's really the key 59.5 I think my other car is 54 or 50.4 but anyway everything I've been looking at this that scan here as you can see there's like everything looks solid I mean it's 
it's like there's not really anything in here that, that uh, suggests that there's any problems or anything, so that's excellent. All right. Parking lights are working. Let's turn on the headlights. Not that we need to try that windshield wipe. Ooh, that's the back one. Sorry about that. Got this car I'm on. All right. Let's see what we got over here. That's working. Hey, these nice, these taillights look almost brand new. Hey, look at that, our headlights are still on. <laughs> a little bit out of alignment, maybe, slightly. Oh, actually this unit down here is actually, ooh, that's still functional. I thought we were toast on that one. This one's got some scratches on it, so. This one, ooh, this one's just, yeah. I think I'm gonna rub that out. Yeah, I don't know why I'm messing around with all the secondary stuff. It's really not that important. Mirror. It's good. Lights go. Oh, yeah, this has a sunroof. It's a, sun, it's a sunroof equipped car. Ooh, it still works. Got no glass up there, though. At least the uh, visors are still good. And mostly everything is still good. It's just a matter of what to keep and... How far do I want to take it? All right, well, I think enough of this, uh, enough talk, and let's start to rock. All right, so I started with some upper things here. I just wanted to get some of the, the objects that were sticking up high and get those out of the way. So I took off the hood right here, and then I took off the uh, hatch in the back here. Since I'm going to be lifting up the car and, and keeping it lifted for the rest of the, the time here, I wanted just to get that stuff that was sticking up out of the way because I got objects above there that I don't want to like hit stuff so I figured I'd just get that easy stuff out out of the way there so it seemed to make sense. And so I disconnected the 12 volt battery and we took that out and I went over here. Next step is to take out the service disconnect which is located right there and that is right here. It comes out pretty pretty simple. It's actually a uh, a bus bar basically and that disconnects our, our HV battery so it's now it's totally shut looking at the front end now this is the right front of the problem area of the car and now we can see where the problem is it's quite obvious with the wheel off now where it is so we have a cracked control arm right there you can see where it's cracked into two and then we also have this uh this other tie right here to the anti-roll bar is also bent and kind of messed up a little bit down there too with the bushings and everything. So yeah, if this was, uh, if there was no other damage to the car, it would probably be a pretty easy fix. You'd probably just have to replace that control arm and then, and then um, this other bar right here, unless there's damage. Actually, I take that back. There is further damage. I'm just looking at it now. You can see right there that that whole piece right there in the center. It's tying to the subframe. It's all bent out of shape. Oh, if I had three hands. I hold the light here. You can see right this whole thing is this bent, uh, bent out of shape right there. So actually, it's probably a little bit more extensive than that. The subframe's actually messed up as well, partially. And that's a welded piece. That's like welded to the whole thing there. Let's go to the f right side here, or left side, and then see if that's just to confirm this. Uh. Ah, yes, yeah, yeah, I can see right here. Let's see that red piece right there is straight and level. Oh, yeah, actually, it's quite a bit different. And then, of course, this is um, tied in real tight there. And then, of course, the control arm is all in one piece. All right, so a little progress report here as we're taking the axle off here. So there's an ABS sensor. You need to take, you need to remove that over here. Basically, uh, just loosen it up and it actually mounts up right over oops, get the light over here hope you'll buy the brake line right here where the axle mount is at and so I've loosened up the 11 meter 11 millimeter um, brake line right here and this is attached to the car so everything from that backwards is attached to the axle so we only have to disconnect at one location and then we'll do the same thing on that side over there you can see, let me zoom in. 
And so that's dripping away as well. So, while that is happening, I'm over here. T took off the inner liner of the back here. This is going to give us some access to uh, wiring, mostly, and then to our charge port, which is right here. So, uh, this is kind of interesting right here. A little <laughs> kind of whimsical. It's like a piece of fiber, like fiberglass insulation or something in a, in a plastic bag. So, whatever that's for, but... Uh, that was wedged up underneath the plastic liner here. Um, and so yeah, that's what that looks like right there. So we got some nice cabling right there. We're going to extract that out. And as far as taking the axle off, there's a couple ways to do it. You can either, you can either, there's like two bolts there that bolt the uh, swing arm to the, to the, the pivots on the chassis, but there's also another way to do it, which I think is just, as, just as good. It might even be easier. Is there three bolts that are attached for the whole bracket? So the whole bracket itself. Oh, God, let me get the light in here. There's actually a bolt right there, and there's like another one, and there's three of them. And what's what's nice about them is that they're all pointing straight down, and there's nothing blocking it. So I think it'd be easier to get to those three bolts than it would be to get to this to this uh, nut and bolt that's holding. That's that's actually. Uh, pivot point of the axle here. What you do is you disconnect the um, the brake right here and that loosens up the tension on the uh, cable here and then you're basically able to just kind of work it out. You don't even need any, any tools or anything. Some some pliers to pinch this and slide it through the two little holes down here. There's a hole and then there's a, a latch for the cable to go on to. So that's how that comes off. That comes off pretty easy. So the only thing you have to loosen is, is in here at the, at the actual brake. Uh, handbrake lever. Take that off. That's the first thing I did. Then I did the uh, brake line and then we'll be taking off the bolts now. Here's the rear axle out of the car. Wasn't too difficult to get it out but there was a couple things here. There's a... Uh, it's funny it's got these it's got these like weights on it between the chassis and the uh, mounting bracket here. And so I removed a couple of these bolts all the way and in fact I should have just loosened them and then so I dropped the weight in my uh, in my thing here, so that was kind of annoying. Spilled my, uh, spilled my uh, hydraulic brake fluid here on one side. This kind of sucks. Um, otherwise, went pretty smooth, pretty easy. With those three panels out, two on the side, one on the front, we now have full access to the battery, and everything becomes pretty clean and simple here now. No hidden mysteries. It's actually all quite very obvious here. So we have a couple wires going in. That's probably for the uh, charging, and we have a couple wires going in and out for the uh, for the uh, power. I'm not sure which one's which, but we'll, be, we'll find out soon enough. It's probably, actually, I would say this is probably the power wire, just based off of the thickness of the wire. Oh. We've got a couple behind it, looks like as well. I know we have another, some sort of, some other kind of control, maybe battery management or something. That this one right here, and then we have a couple coolant hoses, one for the intake and then one for the uh, output, I guess. And uh, so yeah, it's all right here in front of us now. So I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just unplug these things and then uh, drain the coolant. Now the coolant's about seven, seven or eight quarts, I think it is, is what it says in the manual. So we're draining the coolant right now out of the battery. You already disconnected the, the plugs over there. It's pretty obvious which plug is what. The thick wires over there are for the inverter and the motor. And then the middle set is for the charger. That looks like about 30 amp wire, and then the the little plug on the the little wires is probably the BMS, I would guess. And the coolant hoses are right here, so we're just draining. Kind of, I did. This actually has a quick release um, way of uh, disconnecting, so it is pretty convenient. You just push on those blue tabs there, just one on each side, and then it actually kind of just kind of pulls out, so you don't actually have to have, to have any tools or anything. I've just kind of got it just loose enough that it's letting stuff out slowly. Not too crazy. 
All right, with all the coolant drained, I pretty much rigged up a little support system for our battery. We have 10 bolts, five bolts on each side, four brackets going across, or four braces going across. And then the fifth one kind of consists of the end here. This thing is, is really quite an elaborate design, I tell you. It's this crazy design. Custom made for only one car. It's ridiculous. There's so much, so much of a waste of space like over here. Like they could have just made a flatter battery, I think. A shallower battery and had it go to width of the car as opposed to having this torpedo in the middle of the car. It's heavily laden in the back, not so much in the front. So it's quite an elaborate device anyway. So I think I got some support on here. We've got our jacks down here. So I'm running like a 2x6 and I got some 3 quarter inch plywood running. Most of the supports there. So I think I got it equally uh, supported. So now what we're going to do is begin to unbolt. And I'm going to drop this whole thing down onto some moving dollies. And then we'll roll this whole sucker out. The battery is down. It's um, the reason I'm hammering on this stuff right here is I'm trying to get this out without having to lift the car. I can actually lift the car just myself. It's so light in the back now that I could easily. I mean, it doesn't take much to, to, to have it swing to the front. I don't want it collapsing in the front, so I can't really lift the car up much back here. If you see, that's our higher point of the battery right there. It's just clearing that little cross member there. And I think I can get it out of here now. I think I got everything I need to clear it out of here. It actually went pretty smooth up to this point. It's just... uh. Taking the back bumper off in my particular case. If I have recommendation, if you do this yourself, try to get your jack stands about as high as you can get them and then add an inch because that would help. 30 seconds later, this bad boy is out. Check it out. That is out as out can get. The moving dollies work excellent and the ply would work really well. It didn't have to be that wide, but uh, just had a piece lying around, so that worked out pretty good. And that is our battery pack. Is that the craziest design you've ever seen or what? That can only go in one car and no other. I mean, look at the shape of that thing. It's just crazy. <laughs> Man. Yeah, that's going to have to be taken apart. So that's coming in a future episode. Stay tuned for that. But now, let's continue on. Okay, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Let me just do a quick recap of what we've done today. We'll go ahead and do tomorrow. There's another day. So we took all this out. Took all this out. This. Got the front end loosened up a little bit right here. It's interesting, it says uh, EV right there. So, I feel pretty good about it. I think that was a solid day's work. Of course, this bugger over here. Solid day's work. I feel good about it. I think I actually got a little bit more than I planned on getting done. I didn't think I was going to do anything on the front until tomorrow, but uh, got a little, little bit ahead of schedule. So, I think what we're going to do, I was originally going to do a shop crane uh, removal, but I don't think I'm even going to need that because... Um, this car has a massive subframe in the front here. And uh, I think it's going to just come out as one big unit. Kind of like the battery. Same basic concept. We'll just drop it, roll it out. Though it'll be towards the front. And that will be for tomorrow. <laughs>